Everyone here? Looks it. Mr. Administrator. Okay, folks. Here we go. This way it goes. Sorry for being a little late here. We ran a little bit over. It's all Carol Fomchenko's fault. And uh, <laughs> adequate notice of this December the 13th, 2012 meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. By posting written notice and agenda of the meeting on the bulletin board in the municipal building at 1000 Route 10 Whippany, Township of Hanover, by hand delivering, mailing, and or faxing such notice and agenda to the following newspapers. Hanover Eagle, Morris County's Daily Record, the Star Ledger, and by filing same with the Township Clerk. <coughs> have a roll call. On roll call, Committee Man Schleifer. Here. Committee Man Faramosca. Here. Committee Man Bruno. Here. Committee Man Coppola. Here. And Mayor Francioli. Here. <coughs> Five members in attendance, sir. Thank you, Joe. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise and join me in a pledge of allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Okay, at this portion of the meeting, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like a motion from the Township Committee to open the meeting so to the public. Moved and seconded. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open. If anyone would like to address the Township Committee at this time, they can do so from the podium, giving us your name and address for the record. I will be opening up the meeting toward the end of the agenda as well. But the Seeing none. Hearing none. Motion to close. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Administrator. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. as we continue with the first item of business, the approval of minutes, the regular mm -hmm. township committee meetings of September the 13th, the 27th, and October the 11th, 2012. <coughs> May we have a motion for approval? So moved. So moved by Mr. Bruno. Second. Second by Mr. Schleifer on roll call. Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. <coughs> Communications. The first item is a letter of retirement submitted by <coughs> Park Maintenance Worker uh, William Batro. And it says, Dear Mr. Giorgio and members of the Township Committee, uh, based on recent events, I'm submitting my notice to retire effective February 1st, 2013. And Mr. Uh, Batro continues to say that he um, appreciates the fact that he was able to serve the community during his 28-year tenure. May we have a motion to accept the letter of recommendation? So moved. We second. have a motion, second by Mr. Bruno, on the letter of retirement. On roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye and Mr. Francioli. Aye. Second item, the requisition for taxes uh, to the uh, Hanover Township Board of Education, total sum $1,606,172. May we have a motion for approval on the drawdown of, down of funds? So moved. So moved by Mr. Bruno, seconded by Mr. Francioli. On roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. <laughs> so approved. Uh, for the benefit of the public, the following department reports are on file in the business administrator's office. They are available for public inspection. They include the report of the chief of police for all activities conducted by the department during November 2012. Our property maintenance officer has submitted two reports for all activities conducted in October. In November through December the 12th, um, construction official has submitted his report on the issuance of all building permits and all uh, certificates of occupancy issued during the month of October. <coughs> the township's chief municipal finance officer serving as our tax collector has submitted his report on the su summary of all budget revenues conducted during the uh, period October 1st through October 31st. And finally, the superintendent of the Public Works, Parks and Recreation and Buildings and Grounds Department has submitted two reports on all activities conducted by the divisions of roads, sanitation, park maintenance, and buildings and grounds for 
Ladies and gentlemen, we now uh, move to public hearing and consideration of adop adoption of four ordinances. The first is docketed as ordinance number 23-12. This ordinance amends and supplements chapter 166 of the Code of the Township entitled Land Use and Development Legislation by changing the OBRL2 zone to a new OBDS zone district by adopting standards for development in the new OBDS zone district and amending various other provisions in chapter 166 to be consistent with the foregoing change. We'll note for the record that um, everyone uh, within 200 feet of the proposed zone change in Hanover Township and also in Parsippany Troy Hills was uh, served with both uh, two notices, one by regular mail and the second by certified mail, notifying them of the intent of the proposed ordinance in the public hearing this evening. Uh, we have the affidavit uh, on file on the processing of those certified letters and regular letters. We also have notice from the Morris County Planning Board that the ordinance 23-12 was filed with the planning board in accordance with the municipal land use law. Ordinance number 23-12 also appeared in full with the proposed new zoning map in the November 15th issue of the Daily Record. So at this time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we also want to enter into the record, as a matter of fact, a letter from the planning board yeah. dealing with this <clears throat> with this ordinance and the letter reads as follows dear mr. Giorgio at its December 11th 2012 meeting the planning board reviewed and discussed ordinance 23-12 which had been referred by the township committee as required by the municipal land use law at NJSA 40 colon 55 D dash 26 a which reads in pertinent part quote prior to the adoption of a development regulation revision or amendment thereto the planning board shall make and transmit to the governing body within 35 days after referral a report including identification of any provisions in the proposed development regulation revision or amendment which are inconsistent with the master plan and recommendations concerning these inconsistencies and any other matters as the board deems appropriate, end quote. Ordinance 23-12 would eliminate the existing OBRL2 zone district and replace it with a, no, with a new OBDS zone district, would permit the development of office buildings, research labs, hospitals and nursing homes, design shopping centers, hotels, conference centers, child care centers, computer and data processing services, indoor physical fitness facilities, and uses that are permitted in all zone districts within the Township of Hanover. In comparing Ordinance 23-12 with the Master Plan, the Planning Board has determined that Ordinance 23-12 is consistent with the master plan. The board recommends adoption of the ordinance as introduced. Thank you for the opportunity to comment on ordinance 23-12. Very truly yours, Robert Nardone, vice chairman, on behalf of the Howard Township Planning Board. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. may we have a motion to convene the public hearing. So moved. Second. So moved by Mr. Ferromoska, seconded by Mr. Schleifer. On roll call for public hearing, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Ferramoski. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Pola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Is there anyone in chambers wishing to be heard concerning ordinance number 23-12? Seeing none, hearing none, may we have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. So moved by Mr. Ferramoski, seconded by Mr. Pola. On roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Ferramoski. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So approved. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before adoption can take place, I'll, I'd like to enter into the record the following. 
when the ordinance was printed in the daily record uh, inadvertently due to a computer malfunction, the whereas clauses, which are not substantive in nature and do not affect the ordinance, uh, were omitted. However, uh, on the advice of counsel, these whereases can be included because they're only the preamble. So the whereases uh, for amendment to this ordinance are as follows. Whereas the township contains a number of zone districts that permit office development, including but not limited to the OBRL zone located in the northwest portion of the township, and whereas the township of Hanover, along with Morris County and other areas in New Jersey, have experienced a decline in demand for office buildings. And whereas one of the purposes of the New Jersey Municipal Land Use Law is, quote, to provide sufficient space in appropriate locations for a variety of commercial uses according to their respective environmental requirements in order to meet the needs of all New Jersey citizens, end quote. And whereas the township has determined that a change in zoning regulations that would change the existing OBRL2 zone district to a new OBDS <coughs> district and permit a broader range of commercial uses in is appropriate in the public interest. Those are the now the whereas clauses which are not considered substantive in nature. So at this time I would ask for a motion for adoption with the amendments added to the whereas clauses into the ordinance. So moved with the amendments we have Reference. a motion Second. by Mr. Faramaska, seconded by Mr. Capola. On roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So adopted with the amendments added. Okay. Just for clarification, uh, this particular zone district is uh, west of 287. Um, it abuts Route 10 and 287, but uh, west of 287, as I say. Um, I guess I'd best describe it as across from the Hanover Marriott Hotel. Uh, lands that Hanover has had um, in that area and has zoned uh, for office buildings for uh, as, as, as long as the land use ordinance that I know of, going back to 68 or so. Uh, this broadens the uses. Uh, in, uh, in this economic time, I think it's going to be uh, very positive for the township. So that's it. Thank you. <clears throat> yep. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue with the next ordinance, it is docketed as ordinance number 24-12. This ordinance amends and supplements Chapter 166 of the Code, entitled Land Use and Development Legislation, by adopting definitions and development standards for solar energy facilities and amending and supplementing certain provisions for the screening of rooftop equipment. The ordinance appeared in full in the November 15, 2012 issue of the Daily Record. We have the notification from the Morris County Planning Board that the ordinance was filed in accordance with the Municipal Land Use Law. And finally, we have the following letter from the Hanover Township Planning Board. Dear Mr. Giorgio, at its December 11, 2012 meeting, the Planning Board reviewed and discussed Ordinance 24-12, which had been referred by the Township Committee as required by the Municipal Land Use Law at NJSA 40-55D-26A, which reads in pertinent part, quote, prior to the adoption of a development regulation, revision, or amendment thereto, the Planning Board shall make and transmit to the governing body within 35 days after referral a report including identification of any provisions in the proposed development regulation revision or amendment which are inconsistent with the master plan and recommendations concerning these inconsistencies and any other matters as the board deems appropriate, end quote. Ordinance 24-12 would adopt regulations for solar power facilities in the township. In comparing ordinance number 24-12 with the master plan, the planning board has determined 
that although the plan does not contain any specific recommendations regarding solar power facilities, Ordinance 24-12 is not substantially inconsistent with the master plan for the following reasons. One, solar power facilities are typically accessory structures to permitted principal uses and when properly located and designed are consistent with the uses and character of development promoted by the master plan. And two, solar power facilities may occasionally be developed as a principal use, which ordinance 24-12 would permit in non-residential zones. Although the master plan does not specifically mention solar facilities as a permitted principal use, such facilities may nonetheless be developed in a manner compatible with the uses and character of development promoted by the master plan. The standards in Ordinance 24-12 are intended to ensure such cap uh, compat compatibility. The Board also notes that the State of New Jersey promotes the development of solar power facilities. The New Jersey Municipal Land Use Law define such facilities as, quote, inherently beneficial, end quote, uses. That is, quote, a use which is universally considered to be of value to the community because it fundamentally serves the public good and promotes the general welfare, end quote. The municipal land use law also requires that solar facilities on parcels of at least 20 contiguous acres be a permitted use in every industrial district. Finally, the municipal land use law excludes solar facilities from impervious coverage calculations. Ordinance 24-12 is compatible <coughs> with and helps to promote the statewide policy. For the foregoing reasons, the board recommends adoption of the ordinances introduced. Thank you for the opportunity to comment on Ordinance 24-12. Very truly yours, Robert Nardone, Vice Chairman on behalf of the Planning Board. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would ask for a motion to convene the public hearing on Ordinance 24-12. So moved. So Second. moved by Mr. Faramaskas, seconded by Mr. Schleifer. On roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramaskas. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Coppola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Is there anyone in chambers wishing to be heard concerning Ordinance 24-12? Hearing none, seeing none, may we have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. So second. moved by Mr. Faramaska, seconded by Mr. Schleifer. On roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Coppola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Knowing that they're not going to go on the roof of this municipal building, aye. Okay. <coughs> now, on adoption, be it resolved that an ordinance of the Township Committee of the Township of Hanover amending and supplementing Chapter 166 of the Code of the Township, entitled Land Use and Development Legislation, by adopting definitions and development standards for solar energy facilities and amending and supplementing certain provisions for the screening of rooftop equipment, be passed on final reading and that a notice of the final passage of the ordinance be published in the December 20th issue of the Morris County Daily Record. May we now have a motion on adoption. So moved. So moved by Mr. Faramaska, seconded by Mr. Coppola. <coughs> Roll call for adoption. Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Coppola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So adopted, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Giorgio. <coughs> the, um, once this solar installation is completed, the estimate is that we're going to be supplying one-third of the needs, the power generation for this building, the electrical needs. That is correct. Yeah. And the cost to the Hanover taxpayer is, is zero. This was pursued by grants from the engineering department, Mr. Macera's office, made this happen. So the installation, we look forward to seeing this done very soon. It will be. Yeah, we hope to have uh, construction started in early spring, probably March or April. Very okay, good. ladies and gentlemen, as we continue, ordinance number 25-12. This ordinance amends and supplements section 154-7, 
and 154-17 under Chapter 154, entitled Garbage, Rubbish, Rubbish and Refuse, related to the unauthorized collection of ferrous and non-ferrous recyclable metals by scavengers. Uh, we have the proof of publication that the ordinance in the notice of introduction appeared in full in the November 29, 2012 issue of the Daily Record. May we now have a motion to convene the public hearing? So moved. So moved by Mr. Capola. Second. Second by Mr. Bruno. On roll call for public hearing, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramas. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Is there anyone present wishing to be heard concerning ordinance number 25-12? Seeing none, hearing none, may we have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. So moved by Mr. Capola. Second. Second by Mr. Bruno. And roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramas. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Now on adoption. Be it resolved that an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the Township Committee of the Township of Hanover, amending and supplementing section 154-7 and 154-17 under chapter 154 of the code, <coughs> entitled Garbage, Rubbish, and Refuse, related to the unauthorized collection of ferrous and non-ferrous recyclable metals by scavengers, be passed on final reading, and that a notice of the final passage of the ordinance be published in the December 20th issue of the Daily Record. May we now have a motion on adoption? So moved. So moved by Second. Mr. Schleifer. Seconded by Mr. Bruno. For adoption, on roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Fermas. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So approved. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you have plans, though. You have plans coming up. <laughs> okay, Ordinance 26-12, ladies and gentlemen. This ordinance would make the provisions of Subtitle 1 of Title 39 uh, by applying the traffic regulations applicable to the Grandy at Hanover Condominium Development. We have the proof of publication that the ordinance 26-12, and the notice of introduction appeared in full in the daily record on the 29th of November. May we now have a motion to convene the public hearing? So moved. Thank so you. moved by Mr. Fermaska, seconded by Mr. Capola. On roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Fermaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Is there anyone present in chambers wishing to be heard concerning Ordinance 26-12? Seeing none, hearing none, may we have a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. So yeah. moved by... Second. <laughs> Member Schleifer. Mr. <laughs> Schleifer and Mr. Coppola. <laughs> On roll call for uh, closing the public hearing, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Ferramos. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Coppola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Now on adoption, be it resolved that an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the Tup Township Committee of the Township of Hanover making the provisions of Subtitle 1 of Title 39 with various traffic regulations mm. applicable to the Grandy at Hanover Condominium Development, which development is located on New Jersey State Highway Route 10 westbound in North Jefferson Road in the Whippany section of the township, and regulating the use of said roadways, driveways, and parking areas by motor vehicles, all in accordance with Title 39, mm. be passed on final reading, and that a notice of the final passage of the ordinance be published in the December 20th issue of the Daily Record in accordance with law. May we now have a motion on adoption? So moved. So moved by Mr. Capone. Second. Second by Mr. Bruno. On roll call for adoption, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capone. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So adopted. Yes, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, on page two of your agenda, we have the resolutions as a consent agenda, but there are some additional resolutions which are added at this time, and I'll read those titles into the record for the benefit of the uh, public. There are three resolutions. The first is a resolution of the Township Committee promoting Patrolman Ryan Williams to the rank of sergeant, 
effective Tuesday, January 1st, 2013, and establishing his compensation at $94,172 per annum under Step 1 of the Sergeant Step Classification Guide as set forth in Salary Ordinance 25-2007. Second is a resolution of the Township Committee, excuse me, uh, appointing Brian DePrimo as Road Division Supervisor in the Public Works, Buildings and Grounds, and Park Maintenance Department for a six-month probationary period commencing January 1, 2013, with the probationary period ending July 1, 2013. It will establish his compensation at $61,200 per annum under Job Group 7 in accordance with Schedule B of Salary Range Guide D of Salary Ordinance 14-12. The final resolution is a resolution of the Township Committee appointing Peter Giordano as Sanitation Division Supervisor in the Public Works, Buildings and Grounds and Park Maintenance Department, also for a six-month probationary period, commencing January 1, 2013, and ending July 1, 2013, and establishing his compensation at $61,200 per annum under Job Group 7, in accordance with Schedule B and Salary Range Guide D, of Salary Ordinance 14-12. Are there any questions concerning any of the resolutions on the consent agenda, including the three resolutions uh, that were added? It should be uh, noted for the public <coughs> that these promotions are into vacancies. These are not new positions. These are vacancies that have been uh, standing for quite some time. And the township committee uh, is now in a position to recommend the, the promotions themselves. So thank you. Any other <coughs> questions? Okay, hearing none, may we have a um, motion <coughs> on the approval of the consent agenda with the three additional so resolutions? Moved, so moved. So moved by Mr. Bruno, second by Mr. Coppola. On roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Fermas. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Coppola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, also as a consent agenda item, raffle applications as follows. Raffle application 2615 and 2616 Whippany Park Booster Club. Raffle application 2617 Veterans of Foreign Wars for uh, the Robert C. Gulick Post 5351. Raffle applications 2618. 2619 and 2620 for project graduation through Morristown High School. May we have a motion on the approval of the raffle applications? So moved. So moved by Second. Mr. Francioli, seconded by Mr. Schleifer and Mr. Coppola. And roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Coppola. Aye, except for the veteran final war. I on we'll so note for the record that <coughs> Mr. Coppola is abstaining on raffle application 2617 on the VFW Robert C. Gould Post 5351. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Ladies and gentlemen, the last item on the administrator clerk's agenda is the payment of bills, disbursement of funds, $4,577,607.12. So moved by Mr. Capola. Second. Second by Mr. Bruno. On roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Fermas. Mr. Schleifer says, I say aye. Mr. Schleifer says aye and include the 12 cents. We'll include the 12 cents. Thank you, Mr. Fermas. Just want to clear that up. Thank you. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. And Mr. Francie. Aye. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That clears the agenda of the Business Administrative Township Clerk. I thank you again. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate thank you, it. Sir. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, is there any other business at this hour from the Township Committee? I just have a few words, Mike. Um, thanks to the DPW, uh, the people and the, the employees there. They've done a great job. We've um, pretty much gone around town and got the, all the debris cleaned oh. up from the storm. Huh. Um, I know there were some people that got it out late, and we decided as a committee that we wanted to keep job. cleaning and 
Um, I'm sure the residents appreciate that, you know, the work they've done. We've done that in, in cooperation with a private contractor as well because it was such an immense job. Uh, important that you said that, Ken. Uh, there's still a great deal of, of heavy debris, uh, uh, tree branches, etc. If it's over four inches uh, and it's at the curb, it's going to be the homeowner's responsibility to get a private um, firm to take it away. So, tree firm, etc. Uh, but we've done a fantastic job. The fellows really did as far as cleaning up branches and they've gone even beyond that. Uh, but uh, you see some pieces out there, unfortunately, uh, you know, several feet in width that are out at the curb and if the expectation is that the township's going to get it. Uh, it's not going to happen. So at some point uh, you will have to deal with privately having it removed uh, or the township will let you know about that. Okay, so it's yeah. Important. Um, in terms of the leaves, I think they're finished. But we just heard tonight there may be some sections they have to get to. Right, you're still so out there today. I'll talk to Brian. They're still out there today. Yeah, you're out there today. I think we we're supposed to be finished up by deadline, but we're we're going to get it all. You know, Good. don't worry. We'll we'll get out there and get it all done. Um, I just want to wish Bill Botra. We had his resignation tonight. Thank him for his years of service, and we appreciate that. We wish him well in his uh, future retirement. Um, and congratulations, uh, Brian DePrimo and Peter Giordano. Um, I want to thank the promotions. Joe, his staff, and everyone that went through the process of selection. Uh, it took time, mm -hmm. and uh, we got interrupted by a storm and a lot of things, so it took time to get to this point, but uh, it's much needed supervision. These are open positions, as the mayor had said before, um, but it, I think it's going to help give us deliver a better service to their to the, uh, our citizens and our taxpayers. So uh, thank you everyone that was involved in that process. Thank you, Ken. Yes, um, from an EDAC perspective, I um, just want to let everybody know <laughs> that EDAC on December 7th held what was called a business retention meeting and business provide information to existing businesses in town uh, about what EDAC was trying to do to help them. And the good news is we had close to 75 people in attendance, um, which was significant. Um, and they were very buoyed by the positive potential of a presentation that was given about the impact uh, to our community in terms of professional services, in terms of restaurants, um, in terms of demand, which will grow as a result of our new neighbor um, coming to us on 67 Whippany Road, that major pharmaceutical company. From an environmental standpoint, uh, we are looking for and we desire uh, volunteers who want to participate with the green team. Um, so please, if you have interest in trying to help our environment, there is an avenue to do that with the green team. And we welcome that. We meet the first Monday of each month in the library at 7 p.m. Planning board um, is very busy this time of the year as well. And on Tuesday the 18th, we'll have a workshop session for what they call a mini master plan review for a vision as to what Route 10 could look like 10 to 20 years from now. You might say, why do they look at it 10 to 20 years from now? Because we're not going to knock in. Uh, we're just going to plan and try to anticipate how Route 10 will grow in, in the future. Uh, lastly, from a planning standpoint, very pleased to report on Hanover Avenue, um, we're now seeing the cleanup of the shopping center on Horse Hill Road and Hanover Avenue. That has begun, um, so that's very encouraging, and we're looking forward to seeing a full-blown shopping center being implemented there. That concludes my report. Uh, John, thank you. Uh, yeah, the, uh, like just to punctuate that, because uh, the planning board uh, under John's direction has been working very, very hard uh, to uh, explore the, the corridors that we talked about, Route 20, uh, uh, excuse me, Route 10, uh, northbound and westbound down to Troy Road from, uh, from 287 and above 287. Um, and uh, the operative word here is improvement of the zone. Uh, I think that uh, uh, we're looking at uh, the uh, present existing homes that are, that are on Route 10, uh, and we're looking uh, at the fact that we want uh, better retail uses. So uh, I think you can envision that what will happen over the overall is that we'll probably have uh, 
requirements for larger lots for retail uses, which will force the smaller retail uses in there to either combine uh, together, et cetera. But uh, we'll have more to report as that study goes on. Each one of our planning board members has a section of uh, Route 10 to look at, and they'll be uh, bringing that information to the planning board. George? Yes. Um, I got a couple of things I'd like to note. Uh, you know, when you get these kinds of letters and you get it received, it's kind of nice to know that you, you got public safety with the fire department, police that really, really get around to do a lot for the community. This one came to Chief uh, Joe Gall uh, Cartwright from the uh, Whippany Fire Company from the Hanover Park Regional High School. This one is a good one. On behalf of the Hanover Park Regional High School District Board of Education Administration, I would like to personally thank you and the fire department for assisting us with pulling the roof back in place at the Whippany Park High School after Hurricane Sandy. We all appreciate your response in deploying the men to the high school in a prompt manner. Due to everyone's efforts, we were able to prevent further damage to our infrastructure, especially since a northeaster <clears throat> quickly followed the hurricane. The firemen are to be commended for their interest and concerns for our schools. It seems to me, it seems to me that cooperation, self-sacrificing efforts such as theirs contributes to us restoring a safe environment for our students and staff. Please share this with the men of the department. Sincerely, Carol Grassi, uh, Superintendent of Schools. We also got a letter from uh, the Calais School from Vince. Vincent uh, Vima, uh, he's director of education, te driver's education teacher, was sent to Detective Sino. We would like to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come speak to our driver's education class. We enjoyed your lecture and hands-on activities. We learned a lot from you and really appreciate it. Thank you for keeping us safe and educating us <coughs> on driving, drinking, and driving. We look forward to applying the concept you taught us as we become young drivers one day. And all the students, kids signed it, so I thought that was nice. <clears throat> I also have here a letter from the Rogers Group that went to Chief Gallagher. And this was on a certifying of our uh, uh, police, police department. This was a radly, uh, rather extensive uh, process that took place. Uh, and this came from uh, Frank Rogers, president of the Rogers Group. Dear Chief Gallagher, I want to take a moment to extend to you and the members of the Hanover Township Police Department our congratulations for the outstanding job your agency did during the recent on-site law enforcement accreditation assessment. As you are aware, the process that you and your NGG embarked upon was an adjunct journey your vision, initiative, and commitment to promoting law enforcement's excellence were the foundation of this successful endeavor. Your leadership has served the citizens of Hanover well and set your agency apart as one to be emulated. Well done, parenthesis, exclamation mark. We would be remiss if we failed to specifically congratulate your department's accreditation, accreditation manager, Captain Waldron. His work on behalf of your department was truly extraordinary and is deeply, directly responsible for your agency's success on this project. In closing, we'd like to thank you for the opportunity to work with you and your department. Please be assured that if it has genuinely been our pleasure to work with such an outstanding organization and that we wish you and the members of your agency an abundance of good fortune in the future. I had uh, an opportunity to sit in on the uh, exit interview, and I would really like to write, read up into record what I wrote to my fellow committee members because I was truly impressed with what took place. I would like to take this opportunity to forward to you a brief summary of the Monday morning exit meeting we had at police headquarters with our certification team members, Chief Joseph Eisenhardt, Jr., Lieutenant Dennis Venata, <coughs> and Chief John Drake of the Rogers Group. Also in attendance were Captain Gallagher, um, Chief Gallagher, Captain Walden, Lieutenant Roddy, Joe Giorgio, and the undersigned. 
It goes without saying that we received a number of high praises for one, the integrity of our operation, and two, the professionalism of those individuals who participated throughout the certification process. Please note the following. Chief Eisenhart was extremely complimentary to Chief Gallagher and the entire department for their professionalism and, more importantly, cooperation. He noted that the cooperation they received enabled them to complete the evaluation in a timely manner. Those comments were echoed a number of times by other, mem other team members. Chief Eisenhart noted that there are 112 standards and that other than those not applicable, they have all been met with a satisfactory rating. An example of a non-applicable standard would be having a tactical SWAT team and so on and so forth. Those kind of standards were all met by our county sheriff's department. Our file maintenance area was shown to be well organized with nothing missing. Our evidence room was shown to be a model room which was highly praised by all three team members. Our evidence officer was also highly praised for his efficiency and expertise. There were future minor issues that will be noted in their report which addresses specifically specific related police protocol. There did not appear to be any problems with our department complying in the very near future. A final report of the certification team's finding will be forthcoming. There is also a final section dealing with interviews with Chief Gallagher and Captain Walden to be held in Princeton. Upon receipt of that report, a copy will be disseminated to all of the aforementioned on this distribution list. The overall certification is good for three years, at which time an evaluation will be made to ensure that we, as a police department, continue to comply with the standards established by Hanover Township. Lastly, as liaison for public safety, I was extremely pleased with one being invited to attend the meeting, the opening remarks by our Chief Eisenhardt, I probably didn't even said one. And echoed by the other three officers, I got the distinct impression that some of the certification processes did not progress as smoothly as it did in Hanover Township. I therefore personally would like to thank Chief Gallagher, Captain Waldron, <coughs> Lieutenant Roddy, Officer Salcino, and everyone else involved with the overall uh, certification process. Yeah. I really thought it was very nice. I think they were very complimentary of us. I think that it's a, it's a great achievement, and I think this is just as a footnote for everyone, especially the benefit of the public, we were very fortunate in getting a $50,000 grant through the Morris County Municipal uh, Joint Insurance Fund to make possible retaining the Rogers Group in order to help the department uh, do all of the necessary technical work with the accreditation. So. Um, I think that's important to note that we were able to get that grant. Oh, very well done. Great. I would like to also wish Billy Bracho good luck. I've known Billy since I was on rec many, many years ago. And I congratulate the two Public Works employees on their promotion and also on Patrolman uh, Ryan Williams uh, on his promotion to sergeant. These are all going to be a credit to our township. Thank you. Well. George took your four minutes, so I'm so yes. <laughs> If you read a letter, we're going to He got 40 yet. minutes, and I get four done, seconds. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> One very brief announcement, then, from our uh, friends in the Recreation Department. This Saturday, December 15th, from 3 o'clock till 5 o'clock, we'll be having their holiday celebration and Christmas tree lighting. The cost of admission is one non-perishable food item for hurricane relief victims. Um, they were asking that you call the rec department by today to register, but I'm sure if you call tomorrow they'll still be able to make room. There's going to be music, dancing elves, um, <laughs> holiday magic. Ooh. It's just an event not to be missed. So once again, <laughs> Saturday from 3 to 5 right over at the rec center. Please all join us. I really want to see the dancing elves. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm up for that. Oh, that, that ought to be. Do they sing be. and dance? I can't promise any singing. <laughs> <laughs> they will be dancing. <laughs> okay.
Okay. Uh, well, it goes without saying uh, briefly, I just wanted to thank uh, all the members of the Economic Development Committee this past Friday for an absolutely resounding, uh, wonderful reception. The third one they did, uh, did a fantastic job. Bob Nardone is chair, all the members there. John, we've got to thank them all. Did a great job on that. And we did have some 70, 75 odd uh, uh, business people represented in there, so it was a very good meeting. Uh, motion to open the floor to so the moved. public once again. Second. Moving to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open. Anyone would like to discuss any matters with the Township Committee at this time can do so from the podium, giving us your name and address for the record. Hearing none. Seeing none, quickly. Motion to close. So, so moved. moved. Second. Moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, one comment. Ms. Oh, Anderson is out there. Where's our engineer? <laughs> yes. We have not forgotten Hanover Avenue. <laughs> it's not going to happen. We're not forgetting you. And we're, we're at the mercy right now of the, is it the county on this? The, the state. The state? The state is reviewing the data. And what are they? What are, what are we waiting on? Uh, their review process could take up to um, probably till May of next year before we get an answer back. Could be as late as May of this coming year. The regional meeting. Did you go, George? No, I had. I, I oh, we had we had a plan. We had a very um, involved planning board meeting uh, here. Is this, is this the plan? Pretty much familiar with it, but uh, that takes in the major intersections. Guess what? I went up there. They're talking about the Avenue intersection. Go, go with the microphone. Intersection at uh, Forest Hill Road, the Shelf Park coming. We moved down, we did Avenue. Putting a light where Monroe Street is. Yeah. Okay, coming down to Ridgedale Avenue, and we died. The only thing they said about Hanover Avenue by us, they adjusted the light, and the cars keep moving. You know what? Come have breakfast in my house. Doesn't this is, matter. You this can is, stop that traffic going to 24. Yeah. When I get tired of staying behind you, I'm going to get in the other lane. When I get up to 24, now I'm going to put the blinker on and cut somebody off so I can go over there. This is the county. This is the then county. Going this to 24, it's still coming. This so is the county plan, right? This is the county plan. Yeah, but they invited everybody up there. Yeah, because you know, we're waiting. We're waiting on. We have recommendations from the county. We're waiting on the on the DOT. That's the camera recommendations or the lighting yeah. recommendations? Yes, it is the camera. Is it, but it's cameras. Yeah, it's it's uh, to better facilitate uh, vehicle detection. Let me tell you where. We're, the guy that came to my house with the guy from over here, he's not here tonight. He actually, when I all said and done and talked, and he talked, I said, you're leaving here telling me definitely. No light over here. He said, yeah. Why do you do that? You have an answer. You don't even know what's going on over here. We, we've, been, we've been in touch with county. Jerry's been in touch with the county on this road. There's been recommendations in the past to go even use the library light, go through the library, as you know. We got various, we understand the situation there. But it's, it's not a road that we can control, and we have to depend on either county and now the DOT to come up with a better way to manage the traffic, to give you the gaps you need to get out of there. That's, okay, that's the moment. when are they going to stop coming out of Morristown Beard, cutting you off, coming to our development, coming in one end and going out the other? When's that going to stop? Well, if I had the answers for that for you, well, you know. Well, I tell you, if I was a cop, your budget be all made, because I could sit there and give out tickets like you wouldn't believe. There you go, Chief. Where are you? Measuring something or adjusting the light. You can adjust that light all you want, not help helping us. Yeah. Because all the 24 is always continuing. I, I, I don't know. What the, the plan is a, is a little beyond me when it comes to these tra these cameras that are going to supposed to drive the signals under what circumstances. I don't know, Jerry, but, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not a traffic expert but on this But they want to put a light on Monroe Street so people can brush the street to go to the shop right. Give me a break. Yeah. 
Well, the only thing we can do is, is keep the pressure on as we are on the DOT to get an answer out of them and find out what they're in. And they're, supposedly that answer is coming when? In May? I think probably May, yeah. That they needed some time to review the data. It's where we are. It's where we are right now. I like for somebody to get hit coming in there and make a left, even to come into the zone. When you're making a left, they're not, they don't care. Chief, can you get, a, can you get some... Um, Get us a, a report at peak hour down there as to what's going on. Can you get us up to date as to what the traffic movement is down there? I can sit an officer there. Are you talking mornings or afternoon? Is this all day? All day. In the morning, like 20 after 7 to 8 o'clock, it's like bumper. It's moving a little faster because they think it's up to light. But like I say, when you're tired of waiting behind somebody, you pull in the other one. Now off the 24, that, you could be stopped over there, but off the 24 is continuously. So how do you get out? Do you have to make a right turn and go in the library and turn around, which I feel like should have. Yeah. And then somebody said, well, what about the speed limit? Why change the speed limit? People are still going to do what they want to do. We just have to get law enforcement out there. They got an answer like I don't believe. Well, I don't think. It's volume. It's they probably. Don't really it's, worry. And, uh, yeah. and if it comes to really gets bad, they might try to make the right hand turn lane out of Marstown Beard that wouldn't touch Hanover Avenue, or make a double ramp going to 24. What? That's not still the answer, me. No. We've got, uh, I, I can tell you, we've got various pockets of these issues in the town. I mean, Hanover Avenue is on our radar screen, as I say, to, to keep an eye on what's going on. But we have situations, uh, you know, all over that um, we know, and economic development knows, and the town fathers know, have to be dealt with. Uh, and that's just one area of many. That we, if we don't get traffic under control in this town, and other towns having the same issue, uh, then economic development and any further growth in this town becomes compromised. So it's got to work hand in glove if we're going to allow continue. We have the, I was telling the committee, we have the new new property owners for the Bear Stearns property, which used to be the Barclays Bank down at the end of Jefferson Road and Route 10. Uh, all of that vacant office space now is being renovated as we speak. Uh, if that's occupied and other areas in town are looking to be occupied, we've got the post office on Jefferson Road going to be occupied. Unifirst is coming in there. Um, additionally, um, the Bayer folks we know come spring, April, May, we're looking at 2,400 employees coming into that site too. They don't just have an impact on the immediate site. You and I know that. They're going to have an additional impact on Hanover Avenue. They're going to have an additional impact, you know, coming out to a Route 10 on everything from Boulevard Road right on up to Ridgedale Avenue. So we're trying our best, we're trying in earnest to keep an eye on what we have to do for, for these improvements. And we're trying to work uh, 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 with, with taxpayers' dollars that, that are spread thin. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's not an easy, it's not an easy uh, remedy. It's not an easy okay. remedy. I got another question. Why doesn't our Whippany Post Office open? You wrote a letter, it was in the paper, did they get back to you? Whippany Post Office? The, the, the way, where you've got that trailer down there right now? Yeah. Uh, not trailer, the dumpster, whatever the hell. Uh, and, we, and we're trying to get that out of there. Uh, they had some environmental problems down there, but that's beside the point. Uh, it turns out that the Postmaster General sent uh, Congressman Freelinghuis in a response, which came to us as well, that uh, that post office is on the list for final closing. They are not going to open it. Not going to open it. We don't get our mail till 7 o'clock at night some nights. Mine comes at 6.15. Ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know what yesterday's mail or today's, you know. <laughs> okay. so maybe is, it's, maybe it's is, tomorrow's. There I don't is know, a 1-800 number we put on the website that goes to uh, one of the main central offices of the U.S. Postal Service. <clears throat> In fact, my wife called up to complain because our mail was delivered late. And um, yeah, she gave them all the information, and the Marstown Post Office called back, and she told the postmaster there what the problem was, but he was not happy. But the mail has gotten a little better, at least in my area, but it's been coming late also. It's, 
I don't know what to tell you, Ann. Yeah. It's not a good sign. I don't no. think they're even delivering from Cedar Knolls anymore. Is that correct? No, they're not. They're not. It's Mars just open town. for just service stamps and stamps and, and things yeah, like that. So there's there. further consolidation even beyond Whippany Close. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cedar Knolls is now consolidated into Morristown as well. Yeah. So we'd encourage you to call that 800 number. Call that 1-800 number, you know, yes. You voice your complaint. Yeah. We appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Unfortunately, it's just beyond our control. Um, so it's best if you do register the complaint with the people that can do something about it. Okay, for now. Thank you. Yeah, for the moment. Right. Anyone else like to be heard at this time? Hearing none, seeing none. Motion to close. So moved. Second. Okay, okay move this all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion for adjourn. So moved. And seconded. Amen. All in favor? Adjourn. 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 We did it twice. 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 We're going out in the dark every night. It's a man. It's terrible. <laughs> 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 <laughs>